Hello everybody. I was uh, recently debating and probably still am debating on YouTube as we speak uh, on a, uh, in the comments section of a video by, I can't remember the French guy's name. He does historical reenactment, acting and stuff. He has a lot of costumes. He, he uh, does, a couple years back he did a video on basically Outlander inspired Jacobite fighting, except he, he did a broadsword and targe video where he emphasizes, in his opinion, the uh, usefulness of having the dirk in a forward grip while holding the shield in the same arm. I, myself, and also Hyco Gross from the Catter Society each chimed in and said that the evidence, you know, that's available um, does not indicate that such a way was used. Also, it, it really, it, it, in all opinion, it, I mean, I've been doing broadsword for like 20 years almost, and uh, Antarge, and I can say that you're more likely to stab yourself in the face than uh, actually get your opponent fighting that way. It's, it's, it's really more of a hindrance than a help. That's what the center spike on the targe is for, if anything. And you might actually have that on your targe while fighting with a, with a dirk still in your left hand. Okay. Uh, anyhow, so the debate is from Mr. V uh, Viking Fighting, I think is the guy commenting, um, something to the effect of there's no real evidence for, you know, my claims, or what is the evidence of my claims? That, they're, that all the evidence indicates a reverse grip for the, how the Highlanders were fighting with Dirks. Um, <clears throat> so, it's definitely an important debate. So, uh, I did mention previously the uh, to the Frenchie that um, I say that respectfully. He seems like a genuinely nice guy. Um, that the uh, McGregor's ex uh, lecture on the art of defense would indicate... A reverse grip. So right here, you, you'll see, and this is in Highland Broadsword by Paul Wagner. There's, there's Paul Wagner. Um, the next weapon that comes in course is the dirk or short dagger. Now you see that it is still a size less than the dagger. This is often used by the Highlanders in Scotland. When they came to close quarters, they directed it, as you see me do at present, sometimes to the right, left, front, or rear, according to the place where the enemy was. It was also used much in the same manner as a lance. For I have been informed of those people who were dexterous marksmen with it. For they would throw it at, at a considerable distance and hit the object with uh, to a certainty. I have heard also the cer of the certain people abroad. That's a different group of people. Okay. Digging, digging uh, holes in the ground, with putting sticks in it, etc. So he says with a lance. So in that case, he's referring to throwing it, not holding it in the forward grip necessarily. I mean, initially you might think that, but, it, but then you see he's describing uh, throwing it. Doesn't mean you couldn't hold it in the forward grip, it just means that, you know, I mean, think of it this way. So he describes um, to the right, to the left, to the front, or to the rear. Now, that makes more sense than to the right, to the left, to the front, which would make sense, but then what, to the rear? That, that really doesn't make sense. And to be completely transparent here, Paul Wagner seems to agree with me on this assessment or interpretation of McGregor's lecture. Now, granted, I wasn't really interpreting it until I saw this book, but I wasn't really taking any per, any of these HEMA experts' um, interpretation into consideration back in those days. I literally wanted the source material. I never bought a Catering Society book. Uh, because I never wanted to listen to Chris Thompson's interpretation or anybody else's before looking at the actual source material, because I know that people would get things wrong. And especially back in the mid 2000s, there was a lot of people getting a lot of things wrong. In fact, I, I hate to be a jerk, but I've seen a lot more people getting things wrong after years of training than I was after maybe days of training on when it comes to certain techniques. It's weird, but, but also true. Unfortunately, uh, I don't want to name names at this time, but, uh, but I could. So, uh, plus the constant changing of interpretation, uh, not always necessarily for the better, sometimes maybe for the better. Uh, definitely things got better uh, as we got towards the 2010s. I mean, YouTube got bigger, a lot, peop a lot more people were sharing their interpretations. And so there's a lot more good information starting to be you know, formed at that time as far as interpretation goes. Um, that being said, I mean, I'm 100% in agreement with Paul Wagner as far as that. I mean, he's kind of holding it almost like the flat's going upward, but whatever. The point is that he's he's holding it in the reverse grip, and that seems to make the most sense given McGregor's, given Archibald McGregor's, uh, you know, verbiage in his lecture on the art of defense. Okay, so 
And this source is apparently, uh, I guess, either it's it's one one. So I'm, I'm assuming it's General Havelock of the 70th Regiment, C4 Highlander, Second Battalion, after the Battle of Cawthorn. Clans of Seps Regiments, uh, Scottish Highlands, Frank Adam, uh, blah, 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 in 1970. That's the resource, not the original source. I'm looking for the original source of, ta-da, this image right here. Highlanders confronted by British troops. Now, this is my main visual source of uh, evidence, proof, rather, that Highlanders actually fought with a dirk in some form or fashion in a reverse grip. This is not the only image I've seen, but it's the only one I can source at this time. I have another one on my phone somewhere, but that's not quite the same as having it in a book with the actual original source cited. Even this only has the resource cited, and this is a re-resource, because this came out in 2002 or three, anyways. So you see here, in addition to a Highlander getting his kilt burned by a British guy and then trying to do an outside half hanger to uh, parry off the torch, he's also holding a targe with a spike on it, okay? Um, if he was holding his dirk, if he was holding a dirk there in a forward grip, uh, I don't know, he might be cutting himself in the face. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of playing. But um, anyhow, that's not important. It's just kind of interesting to see him doing a half, an outside half hanger. And this guy over here is, uh, looks like he's holding a rapier and, and he's in basically a foil fencing, you know, stance. This guy here is an outside guard. He's wearing trues and he's got... I realize that they're um, they're wearing checkered um, Glen Garys. Anyhow, look at look at the expression on the guy's face. But he's holding the dirk in the reverse. Okay, I've seen at least one other image of such with broadsword and dirk. At least one. I think there might be yet another one that's similar to this, but not this image that does kind of something similar. Except the guys over the guys over here instead of over here, but I have to find that. Please don't quote me on that yet, <laughs> as I publish this video, of course. But um, why would somebody be doing this? Why would they be doing it in other images as well and not have the, not be holding it in a Mangouche um, stance with a forward grip if the forward grip was actually used? I mean, all the European fencing texts that I've seen, which are mostly, of course, rapier and dagger, um, also side sword and dagger, they all... They all have the forward grip. Highlanders seem to be the only ones that were using a reverse grip, apparently. But they also weren't using rapiers, they were using broadswords. So the style of fighting was definitely different than what you would have seen on the continent, at least by this time period. Now, prior to this time period, you did have both Rondell and Balak daggers showing up in books like Hans Tollhofer, Fiore, and of course later Joachim Meyer. The German and Italian texts have, um, you know... Again, depending on the artwork, depending on the image, either a Balak dagger of some kind or a Rondell dagger. And uh, Meyer, it's all the Rondell dagger, but you'll see, like, I recall at least one image in, in one of the versions of the Tallhofer text where you see the, uh, <clears throat> it's obviously a Balak dagger of some kind. So you'll see him using either the reverse or the forward grip, depending on the technique itself. Now, we don't have manuals on how the Highlanders were fighting with anything other than broadsword. You can say there's broadsword and targe from Thomas Page, and there are there are a couple techniques there. There's not really a lot of material to work with, unfortunately. And none of the other sources actually really give a whole lot of information about how to fight with the targe. So you can glean it from Italian sources. You know, there's there's one technique I like to fence with. Um, it's a rapier and, and rotella technique I like to use with broadsword and targe, and it works. But it's not sourced within any of the Scottish sources, okay? So anyhow... Um, this is my main proof that they were fighting this way, okay? I mean, again, based upon where that source cited in here actually got this image from. I don't know what, um, what museum catalog, what, what, you know, castle collection this, this comes from. I don't know the, um, the provenance of this image. So I can't really give you guys much more than this, but this this right here, whoop, this is my resource right here when it comes to that particular image, okay? And there's a lot of cool stuff in this book. And if you really want a book on how to fight with the Highland Broadsword, this is the this is the Bible. Don't bother, if you can find a copy of this on Etsy, I, I'm not kidding, you can find it on Etsy, buy it. 
I want to buy an extra copy because every, you can't find these five manuals together anywhere else. And there's really no better source than this because you have Angelo and you got others. And Angelo's really the best source to, be, to really train with in the beginning anyway. So as I toss this on the ground, it's, it's pretty well loved as you can tell. It suffered water damage early on because a friend misheld it. Um, so these are, these are my Dirks, okay? Some of my Dirks. Now, just to kind of give you guys an example, um, and then we got this one here, which is a, a bad historical example. So let me take the sheaths away for a second, and I'll kind of explain these, um, these daggers a little bit. So this one is uh, from uh, Medieval Heirlooms. My friend uh, Dan Laird makes this. Uh, it's kind of based off of the Museum Replicas one, which I, I mean, it's a little bit different. It's not exactly the same, but it's, it's pretty similar. Um, he, happened, he just happened to make this one with a three-finger grip like they were doing and it's got the, bo the bollocks, it's got the, um, it's got the head, it's got the shaft. Basically, these are penis daggers. I mean, they descend from the Balak dagger anyway. I don't care what anybody says. There's supposedly more evidence now to, to contradict that, but I've seen enough evidence that pretty much verifies it. So, um, but I can't claim this to be 100% historical, historically correct. This one here is one that I made. Now, the blade, I ground the, uh, the the leaf tip to be less regimental looking, but it still has a regimental file work on it. it this is a windless blade, okay? The um, I did use a three-finger grip, as you'll see on historical examples. I did, you know, I used... Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, okay, give me a sec. I got to clean up layup anyway. So, yeah, basically I did the three-finger grip. It's got the bollocks. It's got the whole, you know, shaft and head. I, I did some Celtic knot work on it. Um, white oak from my mom's house. What you see here is the Paul Chin example that is not historically correct. It's got more than a four finger grip. This is really like, this is extremely long. I've only seen a couple of, of Dirks that seem to have a four finger grip. They're probably, been, they're probably not even this long. This is like a four and a half finger grip. I used to love this thing so much. I'm like, man, that's the coolest thing ever. I finally got myself a, 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 like an actual Balak Dirk. Yeah. Well, I, you get older and you realize things. So the bollocks never really look like this on actual historical dirks. Now, in all fairness, historical dirks came in all shapes, sizes, colors, flavors, so to speak. Okay. Um, during the pre-Victorian era. Okay. Like this one right here that I made that just unfortunately dropped like an idiot. Um, I have to redo the finish. I'm actually going to probably, hopefully not sand this. Hopefully just, you know, denature or acetone this Danish oil finish that's already rubbing off anyway, but this one here is based off of one I, I've seen on an auction house. And it has, it is an antique. It's obviously, you know, pre-Victorian and well, that or it's a replica of pre-Victorian, but it has the, you know, if you look at original examples, you look at Victorian era, this style of Dirk would look even more perfect because they're trying to recreate the past but they would also add like, you know, nickel or silver nails to make it even more fancy looking. And the sheaths were way better looking than the pre-1745 versions, like by far. So me, I'm trying to create something that looks like it's hand carved, and it is. I filed this myself. I didn't even use a lathe. I am gonna add some brass to it here. I am planning on adding some brass here and of course straightening that out. And then also adding sort of a crescent shape. What's gonna happen as a result is that my my lovely kind of Masonic-ish looking uh, sheath will end up uh, having to be modified up here as well. I'll have to kind of cut some of this down and make a crescent there. And that's fine, I got room to do that. And this here, this style was done. It's um, not the cleanest. I gotta clean, I gotta carve all this and clean up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish the dirk and then I do whatever brass I need to add to this. I might add a tip in brass. But yes, anyhow, um, that right there is not inaccurate. It's just not as clean as, say, this method right here. Whoop, let me zoom back a little bit here. Um, that's actually a much cleaner way of doing it. That's not historically correct. I was just kind of being artistic. But this right here, that's I've seen that uh, before on, on some antiques. Um, all you got to do is, is sew it like that and then twist it while the le while the dye is still, you know, dye and sealer are still kind of wet. So anyhow, I can do the same thing to this guy if I want, but this actually 
feels really good in my great kilt as it did at the Seaside Highland Games just recently, just a couple weekends back. Anyhow, um, then you got the Victorian style Dirk, okay? Like this whole style is definitely post 1746, okay? And of course you got all, you got the whole crown. It's, it's like a government issued Dirks. And, but here's the deal. All, one thing they all have in common, except this one here, okay? What they all have in common, very much so, is they feel better in the reverse grip. Now this one here, because I haven't, the, the haunches aren't so wide, and because I haven't had the brass yet, it's actually a little more comfortable than the other ones to hold this way. But there's still that gap right there, okay? Uh, this one here, it's comfortable because it's smooth, but to be honest, that feels way more secure to me. And you see how the gap is closed? This one, kind of same deal. This guy right here, it feels, and I've always noticed that this style feels very awkward like this, especially on the, between the ring and middle fingers. Look at that. It's, it's such a huge gap. And but whereas if you do it this way, you got a firmer grip. You just close the gap. Gap is closed. Now I realize that this is also replica, but these things are so overproduced and have been overproduced since, you know, again, like the Victorian era that I don't think that the... Um, and again, I need to study these in a little more detail as far as measurements go, but uh, this style. But I don't think that the, the, those who are making replicas, the uh, these manufacturers, are really basing these off of mm, just something they saw on the internet. Like this one right here is just kind of more based off of what Paul Chin would have seen on the internet, maybe, and some artistic rendition. This is actually how regimental dirks looked and were, were built how they feel. So that's why I'm not really, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not like chiding myself too much for saying, yeah, this is how they, this is, you know, but look at that. I mean, I mean, look at that. It feels so much better. This feels so dang secure like this. I noticed this early on. Like I wanted to, to hold it like this. I thought, yeah, that's the way to do it. But this always felt better in my hands. Okay. 100% of the time. So with that in mind, that seems to fit just from a common sense standpoint that they were fighting in the reverse grip with this weapon. They, they simply were. Now, all the pictorial evidence shows that I've seen at least and that Heiko Gross of the Cavern Society, is, um, as he's pointed out in the past, um, has, you know, basically the evidence that we've seen indicates only the reverse grip. It doesn't mean they weren't fighting with a forward grip. Now, here's the deal. Uh, I believe it was the Campbells versus McMartins, where the uh, the Campbells were, were going through the forest. They got attacked by the McMartins. And what happened was the um, the Campbells only had dirks. They had no swords, but the McMartins had swords. So the Campbells took their dirks and they chopped some cudgels out of ash. No, not ash. It was uh, alder, I believe. And they made cudgels out of them and they fought off the McMartins and won. Now, in that situation, you're obviously not going to be going, oh, I'm going to cut a tree down. Obviously, you're not going to do that. Oh, yeah, by the way, pardon the garbage here. I am I need to get my garage more situated. You're obviously going to be doing it like this. But as far as how they fought afterwards, they probably had the cudgel in this hand, and they probably had the dirk in this hand, given the Highland method of fighting that as far as we can see, based upon what little evidence we have, admittedly. But also, McGinn's image of the, uh, of the McGregor clansmen He's holding his dirk in a reverse grip and he's kissing it and he's holding his, uh, his left hand up into a fist. That looks like he's swearing upon the dirk. Now, granted, it is, there's a lot of historically inaccurate images in uh, McKeon's book. That, however, seems to fit some cultural continuity, in my opinion. Um, one, because again, all the pictorial evidence shows the reverse grip. Uh, the Pinnacook sketch, there's a guy reaching under the pillow, pulling out a dagger. It, you know, it's hard to tell exactly what kind of dagger it is. It's obviously not a ski and do. It's obviously longer than a ski and do. And the ski and do, as we think of it, wasn't even really around yet. Um, it was probably a ski knockless at that time, and which would have been a longer style of knife, which I've made a couple of, and I don't have them in front of me at the moment. I apologize. So that's something to keep in mind. Now... 
the um, it's probably a figurative image of a Dirk in a Pinnacook sketch. I can't prove it. Nobody can prove it. You also can't disprove it. Not that that's evidence per se, but it's more likely that he's actually reaching in and reaching under and grabbing a Dirk. So I'm going to argue that's the case. Um, but it can't be proven one way or the other. Admittedly, it can't be proven one way or the other. But um, the ski and do, for example, though, I mean, it's really a small knife. Like, you know, um, unless you're sneaking behind somebody, you're probably not going to be using the reverse grip. You probably are going to be using a forward grip. Smaller knives are really easier to use as tools in a reverse grip and also as fighting implements. Um, so I wouldn't actually go so far as to say that, you know, it's likely he was using a ski and do. Um, ski and Oculus maybe, you know, there's some, or, or a Gralic knife. The ski and Oculuses and Gralic sometimes get interchanged as far as the name goes. It's hard to tell which one's which in terms of, I mean, it just, there's some bad categorization that's, that's gone on. But in any case, oh, I, got, I got a book on those two. I need to, I should pull that out. But anyhow, um, this is, this is my opinion. I just want to share this and I might even, you know, uh, hyperlink this video to the comments of that one video, um, to share with Mr. Uh, again, I believe it's Viking fighting. I'm not in front of it at the moment. Uh, got home from work, did some boxing. I'm a little winded and I just kind of, yeah. Anyhow, let me know what you all think. And if anybody has any actual, um, sources of, of images similar to the one that I've shown, please, please let me know because I really would like to find them and be able to use them permanently as an actual source to prove my point and also just in general, it's good to have that stuff. I mean, if there's any evidence to the contrary of what I'm saying, I'd like to see it. The only evidence I've seen, um, I mentioned this in one of the comments of that video, there is the, uh, the Dirk dance, which has survived in the 20th and early 21st century. It might be extinct now. Louis Pasteur passed away and, you know, I'm not sure who else learned it that's still alive. Uh, there is video footage from the 70s, though, 1970s, of it being demonstrated. So it could be cre recreated in that sense. It also has been published in Joan and Tom Flett's uh, book on Highland Dances. And I have that book. Um, they describe how to swing the dirk. They don't really actually like have any drawings or images. Louis Pasteur was working on that. And unfortunately he passed away. So it never, he never actually published that. That never ended up in, in Chris Thompson's book on knife fighting. Like as far as the images that, that Louis was drawing for that. So I'm kind of annoyed by that. Uh, it's also why I never bought the book. So if my memory serves correct. So, but, uh, in the Dirk dance, yeah, there is. And I've seen, I remember seeing stock footage um, on Louis's website, dirkdance.tripod, blah, 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 whatever the website was. I think it's gone now. Where the uh, the old man that still knew the dance, who was really aged, was teaching him how to like cut with a Dirk in the dance. And he was obviously using a forward grip. Now, here's the thing though um, that's in a Dirk dance that has survived in a living tradition that got documented, I believe in the mid 20th century. And, um, which in its current form, even traceable would go back to maybe the 1800s. Uh, we cannot definitively trace it back to even the late 1700s. There's evidence of, of other dances, uh, you know, that you know, would predate even that. But as far as the dances being documented themselves, like what the steps were, what was going on. We don't have that information, unfortunately. And it's it sucks, but it's also true. So unless evidence has shown up in the last few years that I haven't been paying attention to, which I would also love to get access to. So please, please let me know if you guys have access to that. I'd love to know. Um, like I said, I've been doing Highland Broadsword since 2005. Uh, I've been training with a European Dagger almost as long more so since 2007. I've, I have been taking a hiatus these last couple of years for the most part because I've not been doing historical reenactment or um, training with a lot of people these days. And uh, my main sparring partner, Brad, we mostly did broadsword and broadsword and targe. We're working on some alehouse dagger technique, just some hypoth hypothetical techniques uh, based off of Mangouche and other stuff. But we, I haven't, we haven't done that in a long time and none of it's recorded. So... Uh, but that's definitely a cool system. I want to kind of mess with some more. Uh, obviously, the alehouse dagger would be in the forward grip because it is a short sword. 
So, but um, a short sword also, a, there's Mangoosh variants of that dagger. So, but uh, anyhow, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I hope I'm not talking too fast. I hope you can clearly understand me. And um, I'm going to go ahead and publish this thing without uh, doing any editing. So <laughs> um, let me know what you think. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.